Hi, pretty little lifters. Welcome back to the podcast. Today, I'm going to be chatting with guest Dr. Lita Malik. Lita is a sports physical therapist based in the Bay Area who shares simple tips for the athlete and active person. Lita is a doctor of physical therapy, a board certified sports clinical specialist, an NSCA certified strength and conditioning specialist, an adjunct faculty advisor with seven plus years of experience in physical therapy, and 10 plus years in fitness. Her main practice areas are collegiate and elite athletes and dancers, as well as orthopedic and sports injuries, post-operative care, wellness, and general fitness. She also wrote the book, The Science of Stretch, which I happen to have right here. And I just love Lita's human first approach. It's so refreshing. So now let's welcome to the podcast, Dr. Lita Malik. Welcome to the podcast, Lita. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah. So let's start by having you introduce yourself and give us a little snapshot of who you are, where you're from, and what you do professionally. Hi, I'm Dr. Lita Malik. I'm a doctor of physical therapy. I'm a board certified sports clinical specialist and a NSCA certified strength and conditioning specialist. I've been in physical therapy now for, gosh, I've been in the field for I think I'm closing in on eight years, um, but I'm born and raised in the Bay Area. My specialty practice is typically sports and orthopedics. I've worked with athletes, young athletes, collegiate, pro, everyone in between, um, from dancers to football players. Uh, I've spent time with institutions and in private practice. I'm also an adjunct faculty instructor at the local DPT program over at Samuel Merritt. Um, I I am in love with exercise as medicine, and I think it's the coolest thing, and I'm all about trying to find the balance between that mental and physical health and how they affects each other in the context of injury rehab and how respecting the two can open up such better doors for just moving the needle along an injury timeline. Um, so that's kind of my passion. And I've spoken a lot on eating disorders and disordered eating and, and red S if you've heard about it, we'll talk about that. I'm sure, but just overall fueling the athlete in the, in a very holistic sense and just covering all your bases. That is my bread and butter. I love this. And I work with middle school and high school students. And, you know, this year I'm teaching a health class. I also teach PE. And one of the things that I want to expose them to is different types of career. Like it's a STEM school. So they're already interested in STEM like Amazing. fields, but like you're in a STEM field. Like, is this something you knew you wanted to do in high school? Like, when did this come about? Oh my gosh. I'm, first of all, I'm so excited and very just I love that you're a teacher my sister is a teacher and she teaches future teachers so education has been such an important part of my life and I think you play such an incredible role in I know it sounds cliche but changing lives and impacting lives so first of all thank you for everything that you do um, but I never thought I would end up well I don't want to say never I just didn't think I would end up in science I actually have really liked art and design a lot all through high school, I was really into journalism and photography, and I thought I wanted to go into advertising and marketing. Um, but I played volleyball, and like most, but not all, physical therapists, I had my own fair share of injuries, and I had people in medicine in my family, all, all men at this point, my grandpa, my uncle, and I was like, are you sure you don't want to do science? And ultimately, I was like, well, I don't know, maybe... And so I got to undergrad, and I was like, well, I should probably pick a major that's going to set me up. And between graphic design and exercise and sports science, I leaned towards sports science because I thought it would be ultimately a little more fulfilling in the end. From there, it was just picking the right career. There's so many science careers, like why well, I could be um, an exercise physiologist, I could go into medical school, I could go. So I, after shadowing a whole bunch, including physical therapy and athletic training, athletic training was a runner up, I will say it was really close. Um, but I ultimately fell into physical therapy as my chosen path in an undergrad. So almost, I think it was junior year, I officially decided. So no, I didn't know going into high school, I thought I wanted to be like, the marketer and like creating things and media and all this stuff. And I mean, funny at this point, now I kind of do a mixture of both. <laughs> yes. But, but no, I didn't know. Yeah. And it's funny because as you were talking about like how you were really into like 
creative pursuits and like marketing, I was like, well, yes. your Instagram looks great. And I was like, <laughs> you are use, I was like, you are using your skills with all this other knowledge that you have. So it's kind of all coming together. I feel like. <laughs> Gosh, thank you. I it it is funny to tap into these little things because I find myself spending a lot of time and like enjoying like the designing part. I'm like, what am I doing? I need to make moves. Like, I need to yes. spend more time with the content. But it, it's I totally it's funny totally how the get things it. that you feel passionate about just end up making their way into things that you ultimately ch choose to do. Yeah, no, and it's interesting too because there was a point in high school where I was super interested in like hosting or being like a news reporter or something like that. Just maybe yes. something on camera. Oh my gosh. And I'm like, here I am showing up and like being on Instagram all the time. So it's like fulfilling it. <laughs> in different ways or like teaching classes in front of people, like yeah. fitness classes or doing fitness videos. So it's like, totally. I'm getting that itch in like a different way. So I, I feel you. I totally feel you. Fascinating. Um, so I was looking at your Instagram. I'm obsessed. I've been like stalking it and everything, but I saw that you, you, when you were like the get to know me post, you had said like in 2020, mm. like many other people, you lost your job in the pandemic, which is so hard. And I know it affected so many people, but can you share yeah. how you use that time to shed light yeah. on like what a PT could look like for people and why should people oh give gosh. it a try? I think it's cool that you use that time to like be like, what can I do with my skills? What can I do? Thank you. Gosh, that was such a tricky time because I mean, all in all, when you talk about physical therapy as a career choice, it's a very secure field. Like job security is there. There's always work. It's one of those things where you never think like there'll be a need um, that, that we can't fulfill. And so when the pandemic hit, and sports were canceled, and elective surgeries were canceled, and people couldn't go to, you know, physical therapy beyond the essentials, like within the hospital, um, clinics, not a lot of the clinics could stay open. So we had to downsize many clinics did, including the one that I was at. And they're like, Hey, we don't really have work for you. So we're going to furlough everyone essentially until further notice. And so when March came around and we shut our doors and I had to file for unemployment, that was like a wake up call for me. I was like, this is crazy. I have my doctorate degree. I went to yeah. school for seven years for this. And I mean, the reality is like life happens and this is a norm for just many different careers along, but it, it really hit home for me. I was like, this doesn't feel right. And so what was actually really hard for me was be, being in healthcare and having gone to um, schools that have major nursing programs, I have a lot of friends that are nurses and doctors, and they are on the front lines during the pandemic working nonstop. And I'm like, I feel, I feel like I can help, but I can't help in the way that they're doing. And this world is just like on fire right now. And so in an effort to give back the way I could, I pivoted to essential um, virtual physical therapy or virtual consults at the time for free for essential workers. Just because, you know, everything was so crazy oh, in March. I love that. And so I was like, teachers, um, anyone in healthcare, anyone that I can help, like, please just let me like do something if I can't. Because some PTs were going part-time in the hospital, but that wasn't an option for me based on where I was. And so I started with that. And then as, as work became more, more and more, it was like month two, month three, like we were in July and there was no work. I was like, I can't do this anymore. So after applying to like 10 jobs, which is unheard of, I have with an advanced specialty, like yeah. in, in a multiple applications, I would have had typically multiple calls back zero. I think I had one that was like, we could probably fill you in for four hours a week. So then I just, you know, I thought to myself, I'm, I just feel like I can give back and I'm not, I'm not doing it. And I just was losing my mind at the time. I was like, I feel I have this time on my hands. So I took myself and I sat in a park and I got a notepad out and I was like, what can I offer virtually based on my skills? If I can't have my hands on anyone or guide them through a workout in the gym or assess them with my hands, what can I offer? <laughs> because virtual physical therapy and telehealth was not something we had tapped into yet in physical therapy. It was very, very small, if anything. And we'd been trying to go get there, but we just weren't there yet as a field. And so this catapulted us. I mean, clinics had to adjust really quick. So I was like, well, maybe I could do virtual care. I was like, maybe I do virt everyone's working from home from now. Maybe I can offer some ergo assessments and consults for I knew neck and back pain was going to be at the skyrocketing. I'm in the Bay yeah. area. Everyone's in tech. And <laughs> so after that point, you know, come September, I was like, all right, this is it. I'm just going to, 
there's no work. What am I going to do? I'm just going to take to social media. I actually only started Instagram because I started, I made a website and there was a little link and it was like link and Instagram. I was like, Oh, I should probably connect an Instagram. And so I just, at first it was just basic pictures, like get physical therapy and like, wasn't doing anything. Um, and then I started putting more effort into it and it started growing. And then I was like, okay, well, this is essentially generating leads for me. So I guess I'll be here for a while. And that's the story. <laughs> I love that. And I think, you know, your story is obviously what other people had to do too. And it's interesting to see, you know, how people got creative and like you kind of exploring yeah. this virtual space for PT, which, you know, people couldn't go in person. I, I think that's great. And now yeah. you've created this platform where you have such informative videos and you are showcasing, Thank you know, you. great knowledge that people can, can do. So I'm, that was a gem that came out of this crazy, crazy <laughs> time. You. I mean, um, Thank and you. speaking of, yeah. And speaking of your content that you create, um, there was one yeah. video that you posted that I was like, oh my gosh, this spoke to me so much. And um, <laughs> it was one that said your number one, you wrote this and it said your number one um, piece of advice is if the gym is your therapy or per personality and you're kind of speaking to yeah. people who like make the gym and yeah. um, working out like their entire personality or like the gym is my therapy and yeah. uh, the importance mm -hmm. of checking in to your relationship with exercise. And you shared some tips on like how to navigate and prepare and dealing with injuries. Let's unpack this because I have so many thoughts on it as somebody who's been <laughs> in the fitness industry for a while now. Right. Like personally experiencing it. And mm -hmm. then like I have used it as therapy and just yeah. now that I can step out and see it, like, where did this come from? How did you kind of also come to this revelation? Yeah, man, I feel like that, that whole lesson is something that you don't learn until you've had a crash course through it for many people. Um, and yeah. so at least at the time, I'd say like in the last 10, 15 years, because the attitudes towards exercise have evolved a little bit over the last 20 years. Even when I was, you know, I work with really high level athletes and um, for example, I had some ex elite football players who are now 20 years out and they're like, look, when I was playing, there was no time for recovery. You slap some ice on it. You got back, you got back in there. Um, and now there's time for recovery in sports and just the overall um, view on exercise and training has changed a little, but I feel like you don't get there unless you've been exposed to it within your training regimen, or you've been coached through it, or you've had an injury to teach you to pay attention to it. Um, and so while it's getting a spotlight now, it wasn't always there, but at this point I was, I mean, my early twenties, um, it was weird, you know, playing volleyball growing up or playing any sport. And I think any athlete can relate to this. You just rely on your sport to keep you active. That, that's your workout, mm -hmm. your training, and you have conditioning, and you go play your games, and that's it. Sport finishes, you're no longer an athlete. What do you do for workout? Oh, you find the gym. And then it's that same grind mentality sort of takes you through the gym. And so you're like, okay, no days off, got to push myself. Was that a good workout? I don't think it was. I'm not like exhausted, like when I was running liners or doing sprints on the field. So where is my bar? Okay, now it feels good. Or if you weren't an athlete, you're learning from somewhere. And for the most part, if it's on social media, it's this whole personality of getting up at four or five and going to the gym and having your, your gym bag and your water bottle. It's just, it's all over TikTok. It's all over Instagram, this whole image of what your fitness era looks like right now. And it's just, it can get ugly when you're not paying attention to the right reasons of why you're doing it. And yeah. when I see people just bury their heads into the gym and say, the gym is my therapy. And you're going through your twenties are a hard time. Your teens are a hard time. You're going yeah. through a lot. You're learning a lot. Life is crazy. And you find exercise and it can become your outlet, which is fantastic. It can be therapeutic. Exercise can absolutely have positive effects on mental health, but the issue lies in relying on that alone as a coping mechanism for a lot of different things, whether it's stress management or hard times in school or friendship issues or whatever it may be with your relationships. If you're just diving into the gym and you're avoiding facing other strategies for coping mechanisms of what you're going through, 
it's a very slippery slope because you embody this whole identity of the gym is me. Like I am the gym. I'm going to the gym and the gym is my personality. Exercise is, is my escape. I just, I'm always in a better mood after I work out and you, you would just avoid everything else. When things hit the fan, if there's an injury of any sort, it is really, really, really rocky. And I see that all yes. the time because obviously I'm a physical therapist. So people come to me injured and I see them and, you know, if I'm lucky enough, they'll openly tell me this is affecting my mental health. Sometimes they don't tell me and I have to, they don't even realize it until we ask the right questions. They're like, yeah, you know what? This is really hard right now. I didn't realize this. I'm going through so much. I can't, I'm not sleeping well. I'm not focusing well. I'm withdrawing from people. So anyways, it's this whole thing of developing an identity, an athlete identity is what we call it, whether it's sport or at this point, gym, um, developing that athlete identity and people with a stronger identity that, that reflects this are at greater risk for depressive symptoms in the time of injury. And so you got to look back and think, what am I, what are you predisposed? I mean, mental health is a whole different ball game, but it's really not when it comes to what well, our strategies for injury management are almost very similar. Just replace everything with mental health. It's, it's amazing. I'll, yeah. talk, I'll talk to counselors and, and uh, psychotherapists, mental therapists, and they're just like, yep, everything that you're saying. I'm like, I, I say that, but I just replace mental with physical. It's pretty amazing. So yeah. that alone, I just urge people to step back and reflect because you can get lost in the sauce and just work out to escape and not realize the fact that, oh, I'm actually doing this because I care about my health, not because I'm escaping from something. 100%. And I think that what you pointed out is so important. So even just like this week in some of my health classes, we were talking about, you know, the importance of mental health, emotional health, as well as physical health mm -hmm. and how one can right. affect the other. And we kind of talked about like, if Absolutely. you are putting all your eggs in physical, all your eggs in one basket with like physical health and you do nothing for your mental health, that doesn't necessarily, yeah, it gives you endorphins. It makes you feel good. Like those little parts, right. but it doesn't really address the mental health issues that somebody could be experiencing. Like you were saying, escapism and avoidance. And it's really interesting because in my, um, late twenties, I had just moved yeah. kind of to the area that I'm in now. And I was in, um, a relationship at the time. And it was very mm -hmm. interesting because we had very different schedules and I was very excited because I just started CrossFit. It was great. I was loving it. And I was excited yeah. to learn all these new skills. So I wanted yeah. to be there all the time. I'd be there for like two hours, but then like, as I got older and like time passed and, um, I'm now married you know, in a different relationship. But I remember thinking yeah. back and I was like, we had very different schedules. I had nobody else to hang out yeah. with. Like I was just free and I would spend <laughs> two hours at the gym because my relationship wasn't that great. And, and I was like, interesting. You just don't know. <laughs> you know I, I wasn't seeing a therapist. Yeah. Like I, I didn't know this stuff. No. You know what I mean? And then and yeah. it's really weird to yep. look back. And I'm sure that Tiffany back then was like, the gym is my therapy. <laughs> oh, yeah. Been there. I mean, I've done it. I'll be like, Brian, you know, like just power through pre-workout. Like I slept who knows how long and you just show up. And it's sneaky because your body can get it done when you're a little younger. Um, adaptability changes yeah. as you after the age of 29, things change a little bit. So I feel like it, it can go undetected. And then boom, something happens. Or sometimes it's yeah. earlier, but it, it you can sneakily get by it. And the body is is going to get it done until it can't anymore. Yeah. And then you're like, okay, what, did, what have I done? And it is, it's so funny. It's, I feel like everyone's gone through it. If, if you're in fitness now and you've been in it and you're probably into your thirties, you've probably had, an, had a stint where you're like just showing up no matter the cost. And that's the problem. Yeah. You should show up, but there is a cost and you have to evaluate that if you're truly in it for the long run. Otherwise, you're yeah. just not going to make that far. Totally. And you also pointed out is um, seeing your fitness in the gym as part of your health and your long-term plan instead yeah. of like this as my therapy. Cause like, I don't see the gym as yeah. my therapy anymore. I, I really don't. Right. It's like, it's part of my routine and it's for my longevity right. and it's for my health. It is exactly. not for my therapy. It has benefits for my mental health 100%. Right. And I feel it and I recognize yeah. it. 
fabulous. But like in terms of like my therapy, like, no, we're good. <laughs> exactly. We are good. Exactly. And I think yeah. that's so uh, important to recognize. The sooner you learn that, oh, the better. <laughs> yes, 100%. Totally. And um, I've also seen you post about how health and wellness on social media is determined by Yes. One's exercise, 4 a.m. routine, supplements, gut health hacks, detox diets, journaling, mm -hmm. juice cleanses. Yeah. I'm trying to think of what else. Good nutrition. But um, right. what actually determines health and wellness is you mentioned economic yeah. stability, your neighborhood, education, yeah. food, community, healthcare system. And I think this distinction is so important. And I, I was so happy you posted that yeah. because I do teach that in my health class. Yay. And I think it's so oh, important to learn because... Yeah, it's so easy to look on TikTok and see like my cute little routine. Like, yeah, that's great. Right. But when yeah. I, I mean, even for me, like my lifestyle situation, income, everything is so different than like somebody else's, right? So like what right. I'm able to do, like isn't going to work for somebody else. So what I would love to like kind of hear more about your thoughts on this topic yeah. of like how social media portrays health and wellness and the reality. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So the social determinants of health are such a fascinating thing and everyone in healthcare and in each of their corners gets really, it's such a deep discussion with so many layers to it. But the bulk of the matter is when you look on social media, you typically see the cute routine, right? The, the aesthetic apartment or the, or the cute like camera angle, um, what is it? The, the smoothie, the, the juices, the powders, like the four, it's just, it's completely in your face. And I don't blame people for thinking that's what health looks like in 2024 or 20, whatever it is. I, but it's just so it's out of touch. Um, because when you zoom out and you think of what actually determines someone's ability to take care of their bodies, it is so much more than just access to a camera and a nice apartment and whatever supplements that may or may not even be regulated, like who knows. Um, but it's, it's more than that. So edu we'll just start with education. How do you even know to go exercise? Who told you it was good for you? How do you, how do you know that that's, that's appropriate for your body? You must be in a place where someone was able to shed that light on the, cause, uh, cause what if you have no idea? What if your surroundings were never about exercise? What if health and exercise never were mentioned in the same sentence? What if health was just going to the doctor? If you could go to the doctor, um, say environment, that's a whole different section. I live in a metropolitan area. It's not always easy to go for a walk to take care of my health. So then you see hot girl walk on TikTok, right? Or whatever. Yep. And these girls are walking around with their camera out here, which scares me because I live in an urban area. I'm like, put your phone down. <laughs> but you You're see like, Somebody's that. Somebody's going to snatch that. <laughs> I know. Someone's going to snatch that. I have friends in New York. They're like, yeah, I don't know how they do it. <laughs> uh, but, but, but that alone, like in order to go for a walk, a 10 minute walk is good for your health. 10 minutes can affect your mental health. 30 minutes, five times a week. As, is fantastic. But what if you don't live in an area where it's safe to walk? What if you can't go for it? What if you can't even go for a run? Runs are getting, I mean, there's hor something just happened on the news the other day, a horrible, it was, I can't even talk about it, but runs are, are not safe for women sometimes. And it's, it's really scary out there. So to, to paint fitness and exercise as the ability to exercise whenever you want and just go for a walk is does not e equate taking care of yourself for every single body. Um, nutrition, yeah. we'll talk. We'll talk that. That's another one. If you are taking, <laughs> there, there are places where we call them food deserts, where you don't have access to whole foods or vegetables or whatever it is that you might find at something like Whole Foods, or or what is that? like a salad bar. You don't have um, a, a cute salad restaurant in your neighborhood. Instead, you live in a food desert. So it's really there's a grocery store. And your best options are probably some packaged foods that are, that are so-called processed, but in reality, everything is processed. It's this whole notion that that is unhealthy and Whole Foods or whatever fancy supermarket that you go to, that's a little more up, upselling, whatever they, that's, that's healthy. That's what's, that's what's yeah. acceptable. So it's just, you know, it's this whole image, whether, yeah. Um, no, I was just like, you said something about like food deserts and it like triggered something that I literally just saw yesterday. Yeah. And, um, this person was talking about how 
oh, you know, here we are, like, not everyone, like, I could literally walk down the street and go get fresh food, like, like that, you know, it's, I live in a city, like, it's very accessible. Yeah. But they were saying, like, imagine you are somebody who lives somewhere where that isn't accessible. And for you to go get that fresh food, it might be a six mile bus trip right. and with all these stops yeah. and it might take somebody else like five to 10 minutes to get somewhere. But for somebody else who is maybe a single mom or has kids or has two mm-hmm. jobs, it's like, that is a destination. And just even hearing that, that I was like, wow, thing. it's, it's a whole yeah. different thing. And we, we, we don't, I don't want to say like, appreciate, but like, sometimes we're just in our own little bubbles and we just think I can access this. Everyone can. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) It's so true. And so these are just the little things that truly paint the picture of what's accessible for each individual person. It's so different. I could, I could walk into who knows what neighborhood and not know anything about them and then be like, you should go exercise three times a week, go to the gym, work out, lift weights, 20 to 30 minutes, twice a week, make sure you get your cardio four times a week and not even realize that they don't have access to a gym. What if they don't even know what resistance training is? What is weightlifting? What's acceptable? So it all starts. And that's why I get so excited when, when people like you are teaching what you do in school, because education alone, even PE is getting taken out in some curriculums. It's a whole, it's a whole mess. And so yeah, we can, we can go after from so many different angles, community education, teaching the kids early on, kids that are exposed to playtime and exercise, not just in sport, but in other ways are more likely to develop a, a positive relationship with movement and physical activity as adults. If they do it as adults, they're more likely to do it through life. And we are just ahead of the whole game. Everything that we have right now, have all our all of our health barriers and just obstacles that we have to positive health outcomes need a little more physical activity and mindful physical activity. So there's just a lot of layers to it. And so when I see stuff on online, that's just painting this arbitrary picture of health and wellness. I'm like, okay, well, let's talk about it. Yeah. Yeah, no. And I'm glad you do, because like I said, I make a point to talk about it in my class too, because um, we do have a very diverse population. Like we have students from like 81 different zip codes and they all have access to different things. So I need to make sure what I'm teaching can be accessible to everyone. Um, but that's yeah, amazing. No, I, I love that you're talking about this topic, especially as like a PT, because that's not something yeah. that I would normally associate or see. And that's what I love about right. your content. I think it's important because Thank it you. is all connected. Um, I do yeah. want to talk about this little guy right here. Ah! <laughs> um, God, yes. can we talk about that? You are an author and you have this gorgeous, <laughs> like, gorgeous book. Like I was just like, I cannot wait to add this to my collection. I'm going to take it to school. I'm going to show my students. Like tell us how this came about. Like, congratulations. Thank you so much. Honestly, it still hasn't really sunk in. I it's been sitting in my living room when I got the book, the first print, I, it sat in its envelope from London. I did not open it for a month because I just wasn't in a place to, to see it yet. But this was a crazy story. The publisher came across my Instagram and they're like, Hey, we like how you teach. Have you ever thought about writing a book? And I was like, no, is this a scam? And then they said, no, we are this publisher. We have this, you know, this is DK books, Penguin Random House. And they said, we have this, we have this science of series. It's a practical fitness series for the average reader, but they're really not dense, but complicated. And and just, they cover a lot of ground and we've had some really successful titles. We have strength training, running Pilates, yoga, and we'd love to, for you to cover the next one. And we'd love for it to be on stretch and mobility. And I was like, "Mm, I don't know, like, it's not really my thing. I'm more of like a strength and resistance training. And then like, well, you know, think about it. If you have full creative control, And so I had to sit on the idea for a lot because stretching has gone through, poor stretching has gone through the ringer of the narrative for the last 20 years. At first it was everything. And then it was a supplemental thing. And then people started bashing it. And now it's this whole thing of like, where does it go? Is it even, does it even matter? So I had to check my own biases when in writing it. And I had to get to choosing what I was going to put in the book. And ultimately it came down to really recapping the most recent research and understanding where it fits in for 
the general popula population and trying to get it to fit for sports at the end. There's a little section on routines. That's kind of how it came about. And then I had to just from there, it was picking what goes in the book and how do I talk about this so that it helps as many people as possible. <laughs> Yeah. Well, it is beautiful. Everyone check it out. I was like, this Thank is like a cute you. coffee table Thank book. You. I was like, <laughs> it is. Oh my gosh. Like, my friends love it. Every house I go, they're like, look at a coffee yeah. table. It's like, oh my gosh. <laughs> I love it's, it. It's I love awesome. it. And thank you. My biggest thing was just allowing people the freedom to, to learn as much as they could about it while empowering them to choose how, not if it fits in their routine, but how it fits into a routine that takes them through life. Um, because yeah. the biggest thing right now is barriers towards physical activity. I'm so tired of just having people scared of what they're doing. Is this good enough? Is this not good enough? Is this right or is wrong? Like, just move. I just need you to pick yeah. your favorite movement and keep doing it for as long as you can. And if you need mm -hmm. help, here's a bunch of resources. Uh, feel free. Yeah. I, it's so funny. I, I joke that if you look through the book, it's very obvious that PT wrote it <laughs> because it's like <laughs> nature's a pain. Anything that's, that anyone's ever asked a physical therapist about stretching is probably in that book. Um, but it's, but I just, I am, I hope for it to be a companion along um, different fitness journeys. Yeah, no, I think it's great. And as somebody who teaches um, health and physical education, uh, like we learn yay. about stretching and cooling down. Like, I think this is such a yeah. great tool um, for me Amazing. as an educator, because, you know, this is yeah. a very specific thing. Um, so congrats. Very yeah. proud of you. Um, Thank you so okay, much. Okay, so I have one more question that I ask all of my yeah. guests, and it is, what advice would you share with your teenage self and teens today? Oh, wow. Okay. This is a good one. Um, I was just thinking of this the other day. I'm like, what, what, what would I tell myself if I were talking to, you know, 18 or 19 year old Lita? Um, I think first is understand how powerful and strong your body can be and how resilient it can be because it's going to allow you to do a lot of cool things. Just first and foremost, appreciate everything it can do for you. Nothing to do with the way it looks, nothing to do with how it fits in any clothes, just how cool is it that you can train your body to lift weights, to go on a bike ride, to run a marathon, just do things that allow you to participate in all the things that make life so much fun, first and foremost. The other, I would say, is, is don't forget to ask it's just don't be afraid to ask questions. If you are wondering how to get something done or if you're interested in a type of movement, go ask, go try different things, have fun with it. Movement should be fun. Physical activity does not need to feel like it has exhausted you every single time because you want to do this forever, as long as you can, because that's what longevity is truly about. And I think the final thing is probably about... <laughs> just because your heart rate gets up doesn't mean it's cardio. <laughs> cardio. <laughs> cardio. Oh my God. And I love that. Training are two, two different things and both are amazing for you. One is not better than the other. They are both necessary to keep you healthy through in different ways as you go through the lifespan. Um, just as you're in your, your teens, you're training for sports. Maybe you're lifting weights and you, cardio is already done, but just, just, being able to explore both of those in ways that are fun to you in our way in ways that encourage you to do it for longer, whether it's alone or with some friends do that because they're different and they're both awesome for you. Oh, yeah, wait, I have one more. No, thing. sorry. This is a long one. Oh, let's hear it. Um, yes. Rest, re re recovery and nutrition matter. Um, you absolutely need fuel to function you need fuel to stay alive. You need fuel to work out. And, and food is, <laughs> we didn't really get into this, but this is a, a key point that I always have to talk about with my athletes. Even though I'm a physical therapist, if you're coming in and you're not fueled for something, you're not going to get better because your body's not going to have anything to build off of. I need you to understand the importance of feeding yourself appropriately and allowing time for recovery. You are adaptable, you are strong, but you are not invincible <laughs> and you need fuel to function. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, those are gems. I love them. And yeah, especially like, I, I feel like 
with teens, especially that's when you kind of have a little more independence in your food. And sometimes they don't eat lunch yeah. and sometimes, you know, it's like meals are skipped yeah. and they're busy or they don't care. They'd rather they're do something yep. else or socialize. And it's like, wait a minute, mm -hmm. we're about to like lift weights. Did you eat lunch? Because you need some <laughs> energy. Like, <laughs> yeah. So no. Those are yes. gems. And honestly, like I love Thank the you. rest one that you mentioned too, because like you said, we are here for the long haul. So if you are just burning the candle at both ends and not resting, oh like you're going to have an injury, you're going to have burnout, like something's going to happen and then it's not going to be fun for something's you. Something's going to give. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. So how can we support you? Where can we direct people? Oh my gosh. Um, well, I'm most active on Instagram. I'm a little active on TikTok and Pinterest, but mostly you can find me on Instagram at D-R-M-A-L-E-K-P-T, Dr. Malik PT. Um, you can follow me on my website, which is drmalikpt.com. You can check out the signs of stretch if you want at pretty much any retailer, re bookseller. It's it's everywhere at this point. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but if you're in the Bay Area ever, I'm, I'm at work in the peninsula part-time. But otherwise, I'm California girl, and you can find me online. Love it. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy day between no clients and creating awesome content. We, I really appreciate you. you. And I'm so glad we got to connect. I just came across your page, and I was like, oh my gosh, she's, I was like, she's I awesome. Don't <laughs> I don't know how I came across yours, and I was like, what? Yeah. She exists? How cool. <laughs> So yes, thank I you, thank you so much for doing what you do. Oh my God, instant instant connection. If you are ever in yes. California, please find me. But it's very, very happy that your students have you and you are changing. I just want you to know like this is huge what you're doing. And I hope you understand thank the you. gravity of it. It's so, so cool. And if I can support you, please let me know because we need all the girls lifting in the gym and yes. it's just the beginning. I love that. Well, thank you so much for your kind words and your time. And thanks to everyone no for listening problem. to the Pretty Little Lifters podcast. And I'm yes. so grateful to our guest, Lita, for joining us on this episode. And I'm going to share all of her info in the show notes so you can support her. And I will talk to you next episode. Bye.